So welcome, this is the baseline protocol version 0.1 review session with Kyle Thomas, this is uh, just myself and Kyle today, John Wolpert. And we're going to be going through, on uh, uh, walking through the code, walking through the version uh, 0.1 um, stack. And with that, Kyle, um, uh, let's, let's get to it. Messaging and types are sort of a, a bit intertwined at the moment. Right. Um, so messaging follows the, pack, the, the, the pattern of having a provider's directory. Um, it has an index that has an iMessaging service in it. So basically, uh, this is a very generic interface that defines a set of methods that you want, would want, will want to implement to uh, support any, any, any other um, messaging provider. We have implemented. Uh, if I was um, say so, yeah say let's pick uh, anybody other than Nats because Nats is going to be in the uh, in, yeah. in the whisper there. What's another good one? What's what's one of your favorite? Ra Ra Rabbit MQ. Yeah, of course. So ra if I were Rabbit MQ and I wanted to add my service to this, what would I do? Yep. You would go up into the messaging package in the in the repo. You would go into source. You would go into providers, and you would basically you would make a new uh, rabbitmq.ts, and then you would write the you would write the code, and it would show up. You would want to create a new directory. I'm sorry, yeah, and then you call call you a new new directory called rabbitmq, and then you would have an index and like a rabbit and a config. We've got Nats and Whisper. Uh, we may we may. We and we're not sort of, we're not advising using Whisper, right? We did Whisper. We're, we're, we, I was, yeah, I was going to say we considered Whisper to be deprecated already. We we may well just drop it out of the release altogether. Um, yeah, no, it was it was easy to use because it was it was in Geth at the. For yeah, the, yeah, it, 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 and it also made sense because the the Radish thirty four uh, Sam did a good job of uh, implementing the the interface here. Um, kudos to him for that. And then uh, it was basically, it's basically deprecated now, but it was still it's okay. Pretty, right? There were some pretty interesting ideas in Whisper. I mean, it, you know, it may not sure. be you know for the future, but uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, some pretty interesting ideas in there. Sure. Well, yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. Um, so basically, you know, you have uh, you know, we're basically just loading a factory and the NAT service from from the, uh, from the. So let's talk about the NAT provider, you know, in, in this context. And we, well, um, for, for people that may not know, why don't we quickly make sure that, that you know, what's the 30 seconds on NATS? Yeah, so NATS is a, a, an open source um, cl uh, cloud native project. Uh, it was started by uh, Derek Collison um, uh, back when he was working on Cloud Foundry, I believe. Uh, at, he's, at involved, he's, in the, he's in the baseline community, right? I've seen him. Yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, Basically, that you know, that's uh, it's got a good pedigree uh, coming from you know in, in the cloud native um, uh, cloud native. It's a cloud native project or the cloud native foundation. Uh, it's got some, you know, it's got some uh, some some really. It's really performant. It's been it's it, it's a it's sort of a flexible choice. It supports Kafka it has Kafka um, uh, binding extension. And um, wasn't, it, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Owen Connolly, a guy that works for Provide now. Uh, who, who, who uh, first identified NAS as a good candidate for this, right? Just to, just to give credit where credit's due. I will give Owen credit for, um, for the ECHO protocol, the idea behind that. That's a great idea. Um, more, more on that later. Okay. Cool. Um, so there's NAS Kafka Bridge. Just something to be aware of here. NAS does have extensibility into other, you know, other ecosystems. And what, what do you mean by that, um, Kyle? So if, I, if you don't mind me uh, interrupting there, yeah, so, so I haven't used the bridge yet. This bridge yet, but what it means is essentially uh, you can run NAS on one side and you can run Kafka on the other, and it should work. Okay, but it was I, I got that. But, but but specifically, say you had three, you know, eight you know, companies A, B, and C that were baselining, right? They were in the org registry, and they had set up some kind of set of uh, processes uh, workflow, and they've got everything set up. Um, are you saying that two of them can be on Kafka and one of them can be on NATS? Or yeah. but so the, the reason why NATS again, not to shill NATS over and over again, but uh, it, its architecture is more peer-to-peer -peer than other, it's, it's brokerless. And so it, it, it lends itself to creating a mesh network, uh, which is exactly what we need. So I think that's a pretty understandable. Um, yeah. Now, where, where do we go from here? 
So NAPS, uh, here's the, here's the uh, NAPS service implements that iMessaging service interface that we, we discussed. Um, you know, connect to NAS. It's just very, it's very generic. It's not specific. It's, you know, it, it's a, uh, it's just a way to um, pipe messages that you receive uh, on your, on your, on your stack uh, into, you know, and dispatch it into like an asynchronous message handler, more or less. So you, you could basically pull in a protocol message, uh, and then, for example, uh, you, you ingest a protocol message and dispatch it into the baseline process. So, so for this one, why don't we talk a little bit, maybe five minutes worth of just talking uh, quickly about, uh, we don't want to go dive deep on, on that. So, I mean, we, we could do a, another yeah. session with Eric on that and that'd be cool. Uh, sure. sure. General, but uh, let's talk about a couple of edge cases or edge failures, right? Because with messaging, it's all about that. So mm -hmm. for example, say you, you're baselining a, a purchase order uh, off of an MSA or master service agreement, which is our canonical use case. Or Alice and Bob, if you want to talk about that, I know that's your next demo that you're going to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. So you know you've got this workflow step, and you've got to get it confirmed on chain uh, before the next workflow step happens, right? Yep. And, uh, your your counterparty's servers down, uh, right? Yeah, their endpoints yeah. Not, not only fun and small tolerant, but but long periods. You know, like. I know I remember uh, uh, one of the things that the Core to Flow guys are really proud of is that you can like keep a thing you can keep a listener open for like a year and it will elegantly yeah yeah you know because uh, they're serial yep. yeah that that kind of stuff yeah so the way the way that uh, the way that there's a good pattern for that um, you know messaging services in general are good good back plane control plane type of type of you know, um, those are good use cases. And so because you're, you know, you really want to create a pattern in when you're implementing the protocol to um, dispatch messages in an asynchronous way uh, and do them in an atomic, or, you know, uh, item potent way, such that uh, any message that, you know, doesn't get um, redelivered or any message that doesn't get acknowledged is essentially, eventually will time out and it's be reattempted. And then every single message type that you're implementing um, can have a different, you know, a different time, a different TTL. In that regard, when you send a message, like if you dispatch a message through the messaging service uh, using the messaging, pro, you know, the messaging package, what you would really expect is for when, when it's delivered and, and it's, you know, when this, when this side of, of the wire gets it, you would expect it to be acknowledged over here. 